Hello everyone, welcome to the next video on the series on how to make a VTuber model from scratch for free for yourself. This video is the second part of learning how to texture in Vroid. I have also added information on how to model hair. So if you want to find out how to do that on your own, please watch. If you enjoyed this type of content, please make sure to subscribe, uh, leave a like, leave a comment, follow me on Twitter, uh, join my Discord, and if you want to support my content, you can go on Ko-Fi. I will be adding stuff there soon like wallpapers and uh, 3D assets for VTubers, so leave a little tip if you like. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Before you start doing anything, make sure that you disable the base hair of Vroid. Uh, this is because the base hair of Vroid kind of just adds another mesh that you don't really need. You can draw the base hair on top of the back of your head. So just disable it. It's not really necessary. I'm not sure about the newest version, if that's also the case and, and how it works there. But probably I'm guessing that it's better to disable it either way. After you do that, make sure to keep in mind that when you're going to be exporting the model, you want to export it with the option mark to delete transparent meshes. So then then you're going to get rid of that uh, base hair mesh that you don't really need. Deleting extra meshes is a really good practice because it helps with the optimization of the model. Uh, Vero doesn't have the most optimized models. They can be pretty laggy and they can be really hard to make it optimized and fit into, for example, VR games or like VR chat and stuff. So just make sure that you don't forget to do that so that your model can have a little bit less of polygons. So oh, let's learn how to make hair properly in 3D for anime or just stylized models. The first thing you're gonna need to remember is that hair in anime is basically separated into parts. So you're gonna want to make sure that your anime model has bangs which is just the front part when you model the bangs make sure that when you look at the top of the head the bangs are in like a triangular shape coming down onto the face this is really good because this makes space for the rest of the hair then you're going to have uh, side parts front of the face then you're going to have sideburns and then you're going to have the back hair which consists of just basically the base hair either over the whole head for like for example ponytails or braids or twin tails or you're going to have half of the base hair and long hair on top or like short on top then alongside with those uh you can have some of the loose hair so loose hair on the bangs are going to basically like small little plonks you know nothing really extreme usually they look like this in anime for the side hair follow the shape of the side hair and just make some loose hair you don't usually put too many in there but you know it depends on the art style if you want to, uh, your hair to look more messy you would ideally want to put in more loose hair especially shorter loose hair or like layers of them then it creates a very messy messy look and for the back of the hair same thing just a few plonks that follow the shape of the hair that are on the back so if you have long hair it will look something like this if you have short hair it will look something like this and of course if you have ponytails or braids or whatever it will look different depending on each hairstyle so here you have examples of how those loose hairs will look like of course all dependent on the nerd style but this is just like a general idea of how it will look like and for the base hair itself also if you want to you can put the little uh, hair standing out at the nape of the neck uh, that is not necessary but you know if you want to you can add it some people also like to put a loose hair completely on top of the head people probably know about this already commonly known as ahoge so if you like this type of hair you can do that for your model as well while you model your hair remember to use the mirror tool a lot of anime hair is going to look way better when it's mirrored using the mirror tool and just having symmetry on your model really helps making it look more clean and now on to the very important part, texturing the hair. I know a lot of people struggle with it, so I hope, I really, really hope that the way that I do it and the way I explain it will work out for you. The first thing to remember is that Vroid has no possibility of having multiple textures, so multiple different hair uh, drawn on one material. What does that mean? Basically that for you to have hair which are colored differently, like each of the hairs or a few of the hairs colored differently than the rest, you have to use two separate materials. Now this isn't ideal because uh, the more materials you have on your model the more unoptimized it becomes so your computer to render and process that kind of model it will really struggle and start getting laggy so if you can please make sure that you're not using too many materials on your hair but of course if you want to make really pretty hair uh, you kind of have to do that in vroid sadly so just try your best to use as little as possible 
So what I first do is take the uh, first material that is assigned to all of the hair when we're done with making the hair. And then I draw the color which I want the hair to be. And then I draw on top a brighter color. And above that brighter color, I make sure that the tippy top of the hair has a little bit of a darker shade. And the same darker shade I apply at the complete bottom of the hair. Now with this, the hair is going to look already a tiny bit better. But this is far from, you know, looking great. Just basically adjust the height of the textures so then you can make sure that all of them are matched up more or less after you've matched up the height of the textures and you make sure that they more or less connect properly and they look even you can start thinking about putting uh, highlights and shadows down onto the hair so for my art style or for cell shaded art style you are going to want to have one singular line of highlight and a singular line of highlight is going to be either on the bangs only or on the bangs and on the back of your hair whether that is a ponytail or normal full-on loose hair so to achieve that let's make a new material and make sure that the bangs have that highlight the problem with this technique is though that the more you want the highlight to be even the more materials you'll have to make so your model is going to of course be a bit less optimized even if you have a lot of materials on your hair, there is an option directly in Vroid where you can change the amount of materials that your model has. So before exporting, you can directly go to a tab, make sure that the, the amount of materials that you have on your model when you export it is the, uh, the amount of materials you want to have. So from here is basically just adjusting work and making sure that all of the highlights are in the right places and are in the correct shapes. So you can make as many materials as you want, especially if you're going to optimize them later on. Uh, and yeah, just make sure that it looks good in your opinion. You can have a few different types of highlights. So for my model, as you can see, I only have one singular line that kind of spreads out in the back. But you can have a lot of different ones. It can be completely straight. It can be small blobs. It can be separated but like still in a straight line. So just go with what you think looks best for you. And from here, like I said, you can also put a highlight on the back of the hair. So if you want to, it's the same procedure. Separating the back hair into singular materials. So each hair has separate material and putting highlights on them making sure they look even all together by drawing them in different spots or adjusting the height of the texture. So, when you're done with uh, making the highlights, you can make the shadows on your hair. So, the procedure is going to be exactly the same as you did with the highlights. And here you can just see me doing it in the very fast motion. The darker shade and its placement is really dependent on your hair. But I usually go around or like on the outside of each hair strand. And then sometimes I add some additional ones in like between the hairs to simulate that there's more hair than there actually is. But yeah, it's all up to you and how you prefer to shade your models. So here you can see the speed making of all of the shadows on the hair so if you want to we can slow it down and follow everything that you see yeah, and this is the end result of how your model will look like so now we will want to edit the body and make sure to fix the base hair that we don't have here because <laughs> we have a little balding spot now. So to fix this, we're going to first prep your model and you're going to do that by deleting or disabling the clothes so that you can see properly the base of the body and how it looks like. Then you're going to go to the body editor tab and to texture. So I know a lot of people like the basic standard body. It's not shaded badly, like it's pretty well made. So if you want to you can just change the base color here make it you know match the skin color that you have on your face but like i said this tutorial is to learn texturing so if you want to learn texturing properly you will draw over this completely and make your own skin completely by yourself so what you're going to be doing first is taking the color of the face that we previously made. So let's take the base color, again holding alt and clicking on here, it will color pick. And let's turn on the mirror tool and just color over the whole thing because you do not need it. We want to make sure that we have proper placement of the shadows and highlights. For the body, you will color pick the shadow that you chose previously when you were making the face. And you will color over this part of the texture. So now you have the color matching properly. You can see we have this little weird shadow in here. This is the shade color. I guess we didn't turn it off properly before. So we can just turn it off here. 
by making it white. So now that we've done this, we can have the shadow continue over the neck. The shadow from the neck, you want it to follow the shape of the face. So our face is a bit spiky like this. So just make sure that it looks like the shadow is given by that and by that face and make it into a similar shape. I think this looks perfect. So let's leave it like this and make sure that it's, you know, even on or all around it. So of course you want it to match. So make sure that th these lines match up properly. We got originally rid of the base hair. So if you want the base hair to be back, you will take the color of the hair that is the darkest point and color over this area. Yeah. I think this is okay. The so next up are going to be armpits. Yeah. So I will choose again the shadow color and choose this brush. And I color under the armpit. Like so on the both sides. Now this is it. You know, you, you don't really have to do more. Uh, this is a perfectly fine armpit. If you want to, however, and make it more harsh, you can go with this brush and just take the skin color and make it a bit less. Blend it out. And just make it like this. Next are going to be the shoulders. Yeah. So you don't really need to do a shade on the shoulders. This is more like a blush. You can do like a, again, with the same brush. Really fluffy brush. Put a little bit of a shade in here. Looks more cute, you know. A little bit of redness to the skin. If you like that, you can leave it at that. If you don't want to, you don't have to use this. You don't have to do this. And another spot for this is going to be the elbow. So again, same thing. Just a little dot. Uh, you can also do this on the fingertips or around the knuckle or not knuckle i don't know what this is <laughs> the wrist bone whatever the hell this is yeah, and you can do some redness on the fingertips like so next up next up next up are the collarbones yeah so collarbones uh you can uh, like a triangular extended triangle shape and uh, call it a day if you're funky like me you can put a little bit of a blush in here i can show you how to do the belly button so you're gonna take this normal brush and just draw a little dot and where you think the belly button will be. Okay, so I lost all of my footage for that. <laughs> I'm so sorry. What? Uh, I guess instead of showing you how I've done it, I'll just talk about it and just explain in words. Hopefully that's good enough. I'm so sorry. Let's start from the feet. So if you want to, this is very messy, of course, but if you want to, you can add in between toe shades so you can have separate fingers showing. Also, at the bottom of the sole, it's down here. You can add a little blush with this uh, fluffy brush and put it directly on the bottom. Then also with the same brush, the fluffy brush, you can put some shadow or like some blush on the ankles on both sides for the kneecaps you can put shadow like this you can also do it just like this and call it a day but if you don't want to you can make it in like a triangular shape like so and for the back make a little bit of a blush again so using the fluffy tool just put a bit of a blush there then for the butt you're going to want to go off to the side to the profile to see where the butt cheek ends that's where you're going to make a line under there for the butt crack simple just a line you can extend it a little bit on the top to make it more visible if you want to then for the back you're going to have the spine showing so i'll just make like with the fluffy brush not as intense of a shadow and then you're going to take the skin color and thin it out on all of the sides so make sure that it starts off with like a bit thinner and then it like extends uh, to a thicker part and then back to thinning for the shoulder blades you're going to just make uh, two lines on or just one line with the mirror tool on in this type of shape so like a c letter so you can use a fluffy brush you can use the more or a thick one so i've done it the similar in a similar way that i've done the back i've made the line and then i took the harsher brush and i made it thinner and then get thicker and then thin out again at the end for the bulbage area you can do like a letter y basically in here and it can be blended out so you can use the fluffy brush again or you can make it with the thicker brush so you can leave it like that for more noticeable effect but if you don't want to you can make it less noticeable with the fluffy brush then for the belly button i just made the little teardrop looking tip and and then I just blurred it out from the top with this brush again. So I took the skin color and just blurred it out. For the under boob area, it's the same thing. You kind of have to see where the mesh ends and just uh, put a shadow in there. So a stronger line and just kind of blend it out into the skin. For the abs, I'm not the best at making abs. So I just make little lines along the line in the middle. Really making sure it's fair and like thinning out. Uh, so it's not too notice noticeable. Then the line here 
and a line here and then lines here which are going straight from the hip and down uh that's how i make my abs they're not the best you can follow the same thing for a male model or a male base for the little hip area here or you can do these lines as well yeah so that'll be all that's how you make it look good Thank you so much for watching. Uh, the next video is coming up probably in a few days again. And it's going to be on how to texture outfits in Vroid. So if you're interested in that, please make sure to turn on notifications on my channel. And yeah, see you in the next one.